In the not too distant future, the process of reducing living or inanimate objects to microscopic size will become a reality, opening a new frontier, microspace. One of the earliest missions will be to explore decay in concrete at the microscopic level. These are the adventures of Concord One. Captain's Log, 1052, Mission File 487. Con Probe 1 is entering a reinforced concrete structure. My mission is to locate and analyze various forms of concrete degradation for Comproco Corporation. The objective? To better understand how to prevent deterioration and establish methods of long-term repair. Computer, I'll stop and stand by to analyze this section of concrete. I'll stop and standing by. Computers, start your analysis. Analyzing concrete. Environment is 3500 PSI concrete, 6% entrained air. Structure is 20 years old. Matrix shows no deterioration. Excellent. Let's move on. Take us to a heading of um, 2695.56 at maximum speed. You know, no matter how many times I see concrete at this scale, it still fascinates me. Warning, passageway is blocked. Suggest alternate route. We don't have the time. We have a lot to accomplish on this mission. Power up the lasers. We'll cut away through. Laser at full power, standing by. Captain, caution is advised. Use of lasers in this area could create an imbalance in hydrostatic pressure. Then we'll use caution. Lock on target. Target locked. Fire. There you see. There's nothing to worry about. Take us in. What's that on the sensor? Divert all power to the engines. Turn the ship into the flow. We're out of it. All stop. Damage report. Minor damage to the engine core. Recommend replacement when mission is completed. Not a problem. Where are we? Look at that crystal. Computer, what happened? Osmosis. Osmosis? Look, this is not the time to be brief. Please explain. The weak alkaline solution in this capillary is freezing. When a portion of the solution solidifies, the remaining unfrozen solution becomes concentrated. Water is then drawn from the surrounding unfrozen capillaries by osmosis to dilute the concentrate. As the solution is diluted, more ice is allowed to form and the process is repeated. This ice secretion continues until approximately 91% of the capillary is full, creating dilative pressure which can disrupt the concrete matrix. To put it simply, it causes cracking? Affirmative. That is why air entrained concrete is used to make concrete more freeze-thaw resistant. But it appears that the concrete is full of air bubbles. Provided the air bubbles are not too far away from the forming ice, they compete with the osmosis through capillary forces and win the competition for the unfrozen water. This prevents further growth of the ice crystal. Cutting with the laser disrupted the equilibrium in the area. So a few more air bubbles could have stopped our, um, our flume ride? That would have been one form of prevention. Right. But the air entrainment didn't stop expansive cracking we saw in mission 485. That was an alkali silica reaction, a reaction with certain types of aggregate in the natural alkalinity of Portland cement. The result is the formation of a gel around the aggregate. On contact with water, this gel swells and exerts expansive forces which can cause failure in the concrete. A similar reaction has also been seen with certain carbonate aggregates. Then both freeze-thaw and alkali-silica reaction are expansive forces which 
can cause cracking? Affirmative. Furthermore, cracking from internal or external forces provides a more direct path for ingress of harmful substances, therefore accelerating deterioration. Well, this will make an interesting log entry. But for now, let's move on before we get into some real trouble. Captain's Log Supplemental. We've entered another cavern where deterioration is occurring. We'll analyze the area. Computer, begin scanning the concrete. Analysis complete. Dissolution of calcium hydroxide detected. More information, please. There are three common forms of chemical attack that decay calcium hydroxide. Carbonation is responsible for the decomposition being experienced at this site. Carbonation? In concrete? Please explain. Carbonation is a reaction between carbon dioxide and the concrete. Carbon dioxide is introduced either from the atmosphere or dissolved in water. Display on screen the consequences of this reaction. Carbon dioxide reacts with all the major constituents of hydrated Portland cement to form calcium carbonate. Carbon dioxide introduced from the atmosphere will react most efficiently when relative humidity is 50 to 75 percent. Below 25 percent relative humidity, carbonation is negligible. Above 75 percent, water in the pores restricts carbon dioxide diffusion. Carbonation from the atmosphere is pretty dependent on relative humidity. <laughs> Is this as slow as it sounds? Carbonation will progress one millimeter a year in good concrete according to the American Concrete Institute's Manual of Concrete Practice. What problems can we expect? First, an increase in the concrete's permeability allows greater access to carbon dioxide and other destructive substances. Second, the reaction results in a drop of the concrete's pH, which is typically 13. Once the pH falls below 10, Corrosion of embedded steel is accelerated. Computer, you said there were three forms of chemical attack. Affirmative. There are two other forms of calcium hydroxide dissolution. First, calcium hydroxide is partly soluble in water, 0.185 parts per 100 parts water at zero degrees centigrade. Over time, water can leach away the calcium hydroxide. Second, Acids can chemically react with the calcium hydroxide, forming water-soluble calcium compounds. These newly formed salts are then washed away in solution. Fascinating. <laughs> in each case, dissolution or breakdown of the calcium hydroxide results in a drop in pH. Affirmative. However, sulfuric acid is a special case of acid attack. The resulting compound is calcium sulfate, which can then lead to a form of sulfate attack. Wait a minute. Where does sulfuric acid come from? In industrial environments, mists from cooling towers, waste, or spills are common. Another source is gaseous emissions resulting from the combustion of fossil fuels. Sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide, when emitted, combine with atmospheric water to form sulfuric acid, which then falls to earth. You mean acid rain? Affirmative. Sulfates will react with the calcium aluminate and form calcium sulfoaluminate, referred to as etringite. Etringite occupies more volume than the original substances. The increase in volume can create internal stresses which can cause microcracking. Where do sulfates come from in seawater? Sulfates of potassium, sodium, calcium, and magnesium are naturally present in seawater and will react with the calcium aluminate. It should be noted, the sulfate reaction from salt water is not as severe because the chloride ion, which is also present in seawater, retards sulfate attack. However, the chloride ion is an excellent corrosion initiator. In tropical environments, seawater has created severe defects in reinforced concrete in only three or four years. Well, we've spent enough time here. Computer, full speed ahead. What do we have here? Hit the spotlight, computer. I think we have found a rebar and it appears to be corroding. Display an overlay of good rebar to what we've discovered here. The passivating gamma phase, Fe2O3 layer, has been disrupted, allowing corrosion cell electrodes to establish. The passivating layer is typically disrupted by a drop in the concrete's pH or exposure to the chloride ion. 
an acid attack, carbonation, and water leaching of soluble alkali salts can all lower pH of concrete? Affirmative. When the pH falls below 10, corrosion starts to accelerate. The pH measured around corroding steel is typically under 9. However, the chloride ion can initiate corrosion even in a high pH environment. Computer, display on screen. This is starting to get technical. Iron corrodes at the anode, generating an Fe plus 2 ion and two electrons which flow to the cathode. This is called oxidation. So corrosion is an electrical process. Electrochemical to be precise. At the cathode, the two electrons are consumed in a reaction involving water and oxygen, forming hydroxyl ions. This is called reduction. So you have to have oxygen and water for corrosion. Affirmative. Reinforced concrete permanently submerged in seawater does not corrode because of an insufficient amount of oxygen. Water is also needed for the reaction at the cathode, but moist concrete is typically also the electrolyte, the medium that conducts the ions. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Computer, explain what happens to all these ions. The hydroxyl ions from the cathode react with the iron ions from the anode to form various iron oxides. The iron oxides occupy three to four times the volume of the original material. Hmm. So the expansive force blows the concrete apart. The forces resulting from an increase in volume can cause spalling, cracking, delamination, and in extreme cases, structural failure. Before we uh, begin our journey back, let's review what we've covered so I can uh, update the log. I have created a chart for this purpose. Now this chart displays the principal forms of concrete degradation that we've encountered on this journey. Freeze thaw, alkali silica attack, carbonation, leaching of soluble salt, acid attack, seawater exposure, and corrosion. Computer, what's happening? The ship is caught in the electrochemical process. Reverse engines, get us out of here! Unable to comply, the ship is acting as a form of passive cathodic protection. There must be a way to stop the power drain. I've been in worse spots than this. There's, there's got to be a way. Computer, shut down all power except for life support. Affirmative. Shutting down all power. Mayday! Mayday! Come in to Proco Control. This is Con Probe 1. Do you read me? This is Con Probe 1. <laughs> 